estate market has been the talk of everyone, hasn't it? Around the kitchen table, on the news, neighbors are talking about it. What are they talking about? High prices, low inventory, the number of cash buyers, the interest rates. Everybody has been really interested in real estate. Frankly, everybody's almost always interested in real estate, but there have been some unique things that have happened in the last two years that have really gotten everybody talking. The luxury real estate market also draws its own attention from those who buy it and sell it and even those who don't. Almost everyone's curious about a luxury home. What does it look like from the outside? What does it look like from the inside? What are the amenities that a luxury home offers? In this series, I'm gonna share with you some of the insights into that luxury real estate market. What did we learn? What did we see in 2020 and 2021? And do those trends and values and statistics, do they continue as we enter 2022? And will they continue as we go through the remainder of 2022 and even into 2023? That's what this series is going to address, the luxury real estate market. This series is backed by a publication called The Report, Luxury Market insights. And with this video, I'm going to give you that report for free. Check the comments, check the description of this video or any video in this series, and you can download that report and read it cover to cover. It is chock full of amazing information. The report was done by my brokerage, Coldwell Banker Realty, in partnership with the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing of which I am a member. It's a membership-based organization of agents who focus on luxury real estate. You have to be certified to get into this membership program. And then we do training and networking surrounding the luxury space. So the report was put together by these two entities and it was backed by data from WealthX as well as Urban Digs. I think you're gonna find the report really fascinating. And in this series of four videos, I'm gonna highlight different pieces of the report. So in this video, I'm gonna start by going to the past. What happened in 2021? What happened in terms of sales? What happened in terms of buyer attitude? How did that change around the globe? That's what we're talking about today. And we're starting right now. I'm Sherri Ann Green with Coldwell Banker. Welcome to my YouTube channel that guides home sellers and home buyers in Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia. First, let's define what it means to be a luxury property. A luxury property is a property in the top 10% of any given market. Now, you probably know what a luxury home looks like in your market. Depending on where you live, it can look very different, can't it? If you're in New York, it could be a penthouse apartment. If you're in Texas, it could be a lot of land and a really big house. And if you're in DC, it could be a row home that's Victorian and old and historic. It's really not about what it looks like, although it is about what it looks like because a luxury house does have beautiful amenities and high-end fixtures. But my point is luxury real estate takes a variety of different shapes depending on the market that it sits in. So you can't say that all homes like this are luxury. What we have to look is at the price point. And at the price point, it is the top 10% of homes in that area that the house sits in. Looking back at 2021, we saw rising prices, historically low inventory, and new wealth. And all of these things really shaped that luxury market. Some went so far as to call it the year of the great reconciliation. The impacts of the once in a lifetime pandemic really shaped what people did, even in the luxury space. At first, there was this panic mode, buy anything you can. And then there was a shift in that paradigm. And people started rethinking how to save their wealth, how to invest their wealth, and how to do it along with the values that had been changed and shaped by what happened during this global pandemic. People began to reimagine what it was to be a home for every one of us, luxury or not. And all this was happening at the very moment that wealth was increasing around the globe. And that wealth was increasing thanks to the rebounding stock market and the surge in real estate gains. According to the latest WealthX data, the population of individuals with a net worth of 5 million plus increased to 3.6 million globally. That was over a 19% increase over 2020. And that is significant because the increase from 2019 to 2020 of such individuals was only 2%. 
So what we saw in 2021 was almost a 20% jump in the number of individuals who had a net worth of $5 million or more. And again, when you look at that compared to 2019, moving into 2020, it was only a 2% plus jump. That's huge. That extraordinary wealth gain led to an explosion in real estate like we had never seen before. A new map for luxury real estate opened up and multiple home ownership opportunities also opened up for people. Home as a safe haven became the rallying cry for all of us and the rallying cry for our time. The year 2021 will be remembered as one of the most significant spring markets we have ever seen. Between March and June of 2021, demand for luxury property soared as people looked for a safe haven to put their wealth as well as a safe home to put their family with the new values that had been shaped by the pandemic. The unprecedented four months sent prices and sales surging and inventory dropped to such a low and historic level that we never actually recovered in 2021. In the 120 U.S. markets surveyed by the Institute for Luxury Home Marketing, of which I am a member, the number of properties sold increased exponentially over the spring buying season from March to June. Single family homes were 77% higher during this period in 2021. And attached home sales were 98% higher compared to this time period in 2020. After June of 2021, things began to stabilize some. Meanwhile, prices continued to rise from the historically high prices of even 2020. The median price point for a single family luxury property rose by 20.3% over 2020 and 29.7% over 2019. The median price point for attached properties grew by 16.6% compared to 2020, which had been a challenging year since prices fell by an average of 5.6% against 2019. Whereas 2020 was really defined by the single family home, what we saw in 2021 was the beginning of looking at diverse properties again. And what do I mean by that? Even in Washington, D.C., we saw condos take a little bit of a nosedive in 2020. At first, when the pandemic hit, and after everybody had stopped sort of huddling up and not doing anything for the rest of March, we saw a surge in almost every property during April, May, and June. And then we saw condos taper off. They just kind of stopped selling. Or if they sold, they sold much slower and at a much lower price point than one might have expected in a normal year. But in 2021, we saw diversity of properties being bought across all markets, luxury included. Let's look at inventory for a second. We all say there's low inventory, but what does that really mean? Here's what I mean. Single family properties by the end of December of 2021 were 20.7% lower compared to December of 2020. People's desire for more space and a work from home feeling and space needed to do that continued. If 2020 was defined by panic buying, 2021 was defined by confident buying as the affluent had a more long range view of what was going to happen and a more long range view of their needs, investing their wealth and investing in a home that fit their new values that had been shaped by the pandemic. Their new needs included investment buying, locations changed, lifestyle change, and even the need to be close to a commuting option. All of that changed. Let's go back and look at condos for a minute too, because there was a big shift there too. The uptick was striking in cities like New York and Chicago, which experienced an exodus of people in 2020. We all saw that on the news, didn't we? Everybody thought New York was dead. Now, New Yorkers knew that it wasn't, but it sort of felt that way when you watched all of these people moving out of New York. It was it was kind of sad, right? And, and unsettling to all of us. That was that panic that we were seeing, right? But in 2021, sales in Manhattan of attached homes rose by over 101%. And they rose by over 55% in Chicago. What was also happening in 2021 was the need for a different kind of space. So people were going back to condos, but they also wanted outdoor space with those. They wanted more square footage and they wanted private outdoor space. A little bit of room to breathe and grow, right? Spaces to move and grow into and enjoy 
all while being at home and working from home. So vacation destinations offering condos also saw an increase in buyers. Buyers were looking for low maintenance, investment opportunities, and recreational opportunities, all in a space that they could purchase. The pandemic also brought online changes, didn't it? We all moved to shopping online and luxury was no different. Luxury retailers had to meet their customers where they were now, and that was online. The digital experience had to change, it had to get better better because that's where people felt comfortable shopping for everything from cars to suits to Chanel. Transactions needed to be seamless. They needed in-app purchase options and a really seamless, beautiful user experience so that that luxury was being communicated in the digital space. We even saw the try before you buy option because luxury buyers needed to find a new way to shop and their retailers and designers and brands needed to meet that demand. In the real estate market, online tours and virtual tours became paramount during the pandemic. But in many markets, that was not really something new. It might have been new to some buyers, but for many of us, it wasn't new at all. What was significant was the number of buyers who were willing to tour virtually, who were willing to buy virtually. That was different. The fact that many of us in the real estate industry were already offering the service wasn't necessarily new, but it was a new experience for many buyers. And frankly, it was a new experience for many agents too. Some of us in a city like Washington where people are very mobile and they move a lot, I had already been selling real estate virtually. This particular house in Georgetown I sold to my clients sight unseen. Now they had seen it on a FaceTime video. We did a very thorough virtual tour, but they never stepped foot in that house before we wrote and ratified their contract. But that was a newer experience to many buyers and many agents who had never done that before also had to get on board with how do we do that? How do we offer virtual tours? How do we offer this immersive experience to the luxury buyer? And while it did happen in the primary market, this luxury buying in a virtual world, what we really saw was a significant increase in secondary properties, vacation properties being bought this way by the luxury buyer. They wanted to buy something, but last minute travel or multiple trips to find the right property just weren't possible. But virtually they could buy what they needed and move right in. It's difficult to say whether this is a pandemic phenomenon or something that will change forever. As I mentioned, I have sold homes before the pandemic this way, and I think in our market it will continue. We have a very transient market from the State Department to diplomats, the World Bank, the IMF, the military, the administration, Congress. There are lots of people moving in and out of D.C. all the time, and many have very busy jobs and very busy lifestyles, and they probably have bought multiple multiple homes, and this may be a second home. They may be keeping a home in their home state. And I think that we're going to see it continue in Washington, D.C. It may slow down in other markets, but for us, I think it is part of what I will continue to offer and continue to give as a service to my clients. And I think my clients are going to continue to need that service from me. Now, it's hard to know if all of these virtual buyers were starting and ending the process completely sight unseen. Some of them absolutely were. But were the majority of them doing that? It's hard to know. Many of them might have been going under contract and then getting to see that house during the due diligence period. It's hard to know. Those statistics we just don't have. But I think it's safe to say that a lot of people needed to move quickly based on their own experience and based on how the market was moving. So getting under contract quickly while something was fresh on the market and within just a few days was definitely happening. And the way that we were making that happen was virtually and that included in the luxury market. So what does all of this mean for the future? What does all of this mean for the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023 and beyond? The expectation is that this profound lifestyle and cultural change that we saw as a result of the pandemic in 2020 and 2021 is simply going to be long lasting and deep rooted. 
people are going to remember what happened and how we had to choose to live during this virus or how we had to live. It wasn't always our choice. How we had to live to be safe. And I think that that's going to continue. Many companies are still in the middle of 2022 slow to come back to the office. Many have said people never have to come back again. Now, will that change? It's hard to have a crystal ball and know, but I think that there are a lot of these values and lifestyles that we have come to enjoy at this point, right? Being able to work from home, being able to work from a space that you really love, the peace and the quiet. I think a lot of that's gonna stay with people. And I think a lot of people are gonna be afforded the luxury to keep working that way. I think that our patterns of living have changed for generations to come. What do you think? What have you seen in your market? Do you think that this shift is going to be something that, that we see years down the road? Tell me in the comments. Are you interested in the luxury market? You're in the right place. Look in the description of this video. I am going to put a link where you can download the report. It is an entire report on the luxury market. It's everything I'm talking about in this video series and more. And if you're interested in the luxury real estate market, this report is for you. What else is for you? This video. Make sure you watch it next.